But uh, Trevor, we, we have to talk about technology in the game. Hawkeye have stepped forward and they've told FIFA, we're going to be ready. Count us in. We're going to be ready for the World Cup uh, in 2022. We'll be there. Uh, and that is going to be part of the... Um, the, the top one of the topics on the agenda today at an IFAB update meeting. Hawkeyes are saying this, the system they've got could be ready for the 2022 World Cup. It sends an instant message to the video assistant referee, VAR, who will then judge whether or not the player detected as being offside is interfering with play. Now, this system that Hawkeye say is pretty darn good tracks 29 points on a player's body and is accurate to distances as small as 4.3 centimetres and is only 0.5 seconds behind the live play. So, Trevor, again... This is this seems to be rolling on. It's getting better and better. Have we found a solution to the future of offside decisions, or is it just going to reignite the toenail debate? Well, listen. For, for to start with, is this VAR Mark II, or is this a different system completely? It's a good question, isn't it? Because that's what I'd like to know. It's a different system. It's a, well, it's a different system. I think we're happy with the system now. For me, there's a couple of things which I'm not a fan of, which is keeping the flag down. If it's a clear offside, I'd keep the get the flag up because somebody's going to get injured. Um, but if you're evolving it now to a completely new system when we've only just got used to VAR, I'm not sure that's the way forward. You look at VAR now and the, you draw the lines in and whether it's a, a half a centimetre one way or the other, if it goes one way or the other, I think we can accept that. I think 4.3 centimetres, which is what they're saying the accuracy is with this new Hawkeye. Right. I don't think, I think that's a step backwards. So for me, I would leave it as it is do more testing, make, I'm not sure whether the World Cup is a place to do the testing, but do as much testing beforehand and then make sure that all the authorities, all the stakeholders are happy with the technology before you even think about rolling it out. Well, apparently they've been holding trials uh, behind the scenes uh, in the Premier League. But 4.3 centimetres, we're more accurate than that with VAR already. If you see the lines go in there, if there's a couple of centimetres either way, we've got it boxed off yeah. I think the, the, the difference is and, and what I would like to change is the, the, the offside flag if it's if you're not sure but you think it's offside put the flag up let the players play on whereas when you put the flag down I feel oh, yeah, it kills certain it, players it? might stop and all yeah. of a sudden someone's yeah. going to get hurt what, what, what do you think Simon is this progression it's our understanding that the Champions League clubs have been trying it, mm. tr trialling it behind closed doors and that it is working it's, it's going all right. They like what they see. So Hawkeye are saying, employ it, we'll be ready for the yeah, World Cup. I mean, VAR is protocol. And the technology that goes into making that protocol work is a combination of a variety of things. And Hawkeye might be the light, latest evolution in how the tech integrates with the overriding protocol. The protocol is a video assistant referee. How that software holds together and how the tech is patched in, this is a patch to make sure that the next generation of video assistant refereeing has the best technology to meet the outcomes that the game requires. So what we've had over the last uh, two years, besides a, an instantaneous resistance, was specific analysis about how the spontaneity has gone out of the game, how challenges are being made in a certain way because referees are being asked to do certain things that the technology doesn't keep up with, or more to the point, the technology takes away from the referee. Yeah. Now we're seeing the, the fact that they've got some foundation behind the tech, they've got an acceptance in the game that the tech is now going to be part parcel of it. Mm -hmm. Now they're starting to sophisticate and they're looking at the technology that goes underneath the protocol and say, right, is Hawkeye the right thing? We've now looked at it. We've now looked at what some of the challenges and the strengths and the weaknesses and opportunities and threats of VAR. And what we think is the technology needs to be quicker and more responsive and deal with the specific, specific being offside. All the challenges that go with that, the referees, the delay in time, the challenges of moving parts, because Hawkeye in tennis just deals with a tennis ball hitting a line. It's got no moving parts in front of yes, it. Yeah. Other players and how they're moving and the momentum is going. So now what we're seeing is VAR as a protocol 2.0. And then we'll see VAR 3.0. And, and if we were standing still saying we've arrived, we know that right now the temperature's gone out a little bit of VAR. We're more focused on the referees being allowed to referee and be able to make objective decisions and the game flowing in a certain way. And we're seeing the lines and we've all become a little bit more used to it. Yeah. If we'd have started if we'd have started with the lines that we got now, two years ago, there still would have been uproar. But because we started it was new, with yeah. a ridiculous yeah. Pr principle, yeah. we, we got better, then people started to accept it. But the this thing is, is just Simon, an evolution. we've got to a stage now that I think we're all pretty much happy with what's going on. 
So, well, so, so why change it again? Because, the, the, well, first of all... Why are we chasing f- perfection? First, We're not going to get first it. First of all, that is the idea that you're trying to re- remove as much of the error as you possibly can and make it as fit for purpose for broadcasting and for the live, uh, live view of, of the game so the spontaneity isn't taken out. Second of all, this is Hawkeye making a pitch to FIFA to yeah. have their technology embraced under the VAR protocol. Third of all, it's not given they're going to get it. Fourth of all, it's going to be tested in the international tournament. And fifth, the Premier League will look at it and see if it meets the protocol for the VAR system that they want to deploy. Yeah. So I just think this is best in class, which is what we talk about at times, best in class being put into the mix and football evolving into a mature business that goes, what's our problems? What's our answer? What's our solution? How do we make sure that things happen and we evolve in an orderly fashion so the next v- v- version of VAR is an improvement, not a regression? Okay, so uh, this is online to come in. If it continues to be accepted, uh, Hawkeye are saying, look, we've got this thing. It, it's looking good. We've got it. It's going to be discussed today at an IFAB update meeting. And FIFA very much are there to be persuaded that this should be adopted at the 2022 World Cup. Should we embrace it? Should we welcome Hawkeye for it? Or should we say, no, look, we've got a system now that is as near as damn it perfect. So why change it again? Simon is saying this Hawkeye situation, correct me if I'm wrong, Simon, I mean, is, is virtually best in class, so why not adopt it? It's making a pitch for it, and yeah. if it isn't, then it won't be embraced, will yeah. it? They're not going to get it just because they're Hawkeye. They are an, a, a, a decent piece of technology that could enhance the existing framework, and if it doesn't, it'll be thrown out. Jim White and Simon Jordan, Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1, on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.